This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Both a full social calendar and debilitating face blindness. Now that I'm older and wiser, on the morning of every birthday, I gently wake up my husband Sam and whisper in his ear, If you throw me a party, I will murder you. He always nods obligingly, half asleep. Except he doesn't really get it because he's a different breed altogether. A quiet person who likes going to a busy pub and hanging out at festivals. But he's grown used to most of our nights out, ending with my hissing, get my coat and meet me by the lifts, while I sprint towards the back exit to escape an approaching tipsy hen party that has just arrived at the bar. Sam goes along with it, but the depths of my neuroses are a foreign country to him. He doesn't understand why, for example, I prefer dogs to people. But that's easy. Dogs don't require small talk. They don't judge you. And they don't hum near your desk when you're trying to work. They don't ask you when you're going to have kids or cough on you. But to Sam, dogs have wild eyes, might put their dirty paws all over you, and are ready to strike at any moment, which is exactly how I feel about humans. I assumed that life as a shy introvert would go on this way for me forever. But then something unusual happened. I found myself roasting in a sauna, clutching a copy of Men's Health, wearing a black tracksuit and weeping as I yelled profanities at a spa employee. And something had to change. That's the short version. Some people are great at talking to strangers, building new relationships, and making friends at parties. I'm really good at other things, like loitering palely in dark doorways, disappearing into sofa corners, leaving early, feigning sleep on public transport. Nearly a third of the population, at least, depending on which study you consult, identifies as introverts, so it's likely that this could describe you too. If we'd say, met at a party that neither of us had flaked on, we could bond over this while hiding in the kitchen near the cheese board. There are a lot of heated debates about what defines an introvert or an extrovert. The main accepted definition is that introverts get their energy from being alone, whereas extroverts get their energy from being around other people. But psychologists often discuss two other related parameters, shy versus outgoing. I always assumed that all introverts were shy, but apparently some introverts can be ultra confident in groups or capable of smoothly delivering presentations. What makes them introverts is that they just can't take stimulation and large crowds for extended periods of time. But I am shy. I'm afraid of making contact with strangers, being the center of attention, but I also need time to recharge after being around a lot of people and loathe large crowds. I am, as one article defined it, a socially awkward introvert, a shy introvert, or shintrovert, as I shall henceforth refer to myself, which is also a pervert who's very into lower legs. I don't know if shintroverts are born or made, but for me, my tendencies began to show very early on. I grew up in a small town in Texas, where I skipped birthday parties, faked illnesses to avoid school presentations, and spent many nights journaling about a parallel universe where interacting with multiple people and occasionally being the center of attention wasn't my worst nightmare. As a kid, I didn't understand why I felt so differently about life from my extroverted immediate family. My father is Chinese, and my mother is Jewish American, and they both love two things deeply, Chinese food and chatting to new people. Meanwhile, my two older brothers were always inviting big groups of their friends over to our house, where they linger for hours. I originally thought that they were all just better at pretending to like the things I hated. Later, I was confounded. Why did they love meeting big groups of new people and socializing for hours and throwing big birthday parties when I didn't? I thought there was something deeply wrong with me. Still, growing up in a small town, I dreamt of a bigger life full of new experiences. But it wasn't a life I could envisage for myself there. I wanted an entirely clean slate, a new place where I could reinvent myself, free from anyone who knew me. I tried Beijing, then Australia, and eventually London, where I live now. 
But one thing remained constant during these travels. No matter how far flung the lands, I remained essentially the same, a shintrovert.